Hey everyone, uh, I'm Joel, and I'm going to be live coding my way through the advent of code 2017. So if you don't know what the advent of code is, um, I think there's some religious significance to it. But anyway, they give you a programming problem every day up to Christmas, and they're Christmas themed, and you have to solve them. Um, and last year, each one had kind of an easy part and a hard part. And so I'm going to uh, solve them for you. And to make it extra interesting, I'm actually not going to look at the problems before uh, before I make the video. So you won't just see me uh, solving them, you'll see me really fumbling my way to solving them, uh, which could be uh, pretty entertaining or it could be pretty awful, uh, I'm not sure. And you know, as I sit here now, uh, I'm telling myself I'm going to do all 25 days of this. Uh, it's possible after a few days I'll decide this was a terrible idea and quit, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So um, this is the website, adventofcode.com slash 2017. I will log in. I haven't logged in yet this year, so I'll use my GitHub account and hopefully that works. That seems to work. It knows who I am. So let's look at the first problem. Inverse CAPTCHA. Um, we don't want to read this together. It's going to be boring. So let's, uh, night before Christmas, there's a printer broken. Um, there must be 50 bugs, but nothing else can print the list. Stand in the square. If you convince them to pay you in stars, you'll be able to uh, collect stars by solving puzzles. So this is all... Uh, okay, good. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. Um, you're standing in a room with digitization quarantine written in LEDs along one wall. The only door is locked, but it includes a small interface, restricted area, strictly no digitized users allowed. It goes on to explain you may only leave by solving a CAPTCHA. Okay, CAPTCHA is one of those things where, you know, um, here's a blurry word, type it in, to prove you're not a human. Apparently you get one millisecond to solve the CAPTCHA too fast for a normal human, but it feels like hours to you. The CAPTCHA requires you to review a sequence of digits, your puzzle input, and find the sum of all digits that match the next digit in the list. Um, I don't know what that means. The list is circular, so the digit after the last digit is the first digit in the list. Um, for example, 1122 two produces a sum of 3, 1 plus 2, because the first digit matches the second digit, and the third digit matches the fourth digit. 1111 one, one produces 4 because each digit matches the next. 1234 produces 0. 9121229 produces 9 because the only digit that matches the next one is the last digit 9. What is the solution to your CAPTCHA? So basically what they're saying is, match, match is a tough word here, but basically they're saying anytime there's two digits in a row, add the first of them in, but not the second unless... Um, and it says, to begin with, get your puzzle input. So let's see how uh, big this is. Okay, so it's not that big. Um, so uh, this should be, to start with, we're, we're starting totally clean here. So I am going to uh, create uh, a fresh Anaconda environment, and I'll call it Advent 2017. And its Python is going to be uh, 3.6. And, uh, you know, it's good good practice to start a fresh virtual environment. Some people use VN for whatever. I just use context. That's what I know how to use. Um, so if I do source activate advent 2017, uh, and, you know, which Python, so it's good. And if I do Python version, and I bet there's no IPython, so let's do pip install IPython because I need IPython. That seems pretty good. So let's make a directory, and I'll call it advent2017, cd advent2017. Uh, let's do a git init so that we have a git repository we can check in our code. Um, and then let's start a VS code window here. So um, you know, we have this advent2017. And uh, one possibility is to uh, give each problem a uh, a file named after itself. I think I'll probably do that. I, you know, I'll probably do like day zero one, and then I'll call it underscore captcha. So uh, if I create a file, call it day zero one. Do that. 
capture.py. That's not a great name for a file, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, and so now we have uh, a string basically. Um, so we want to um, sum matching digits. Uh, and we have some string and it's going to produce an int. And again, all we want to do is uh, iterate over it. Um, so, you know, let's just say total equals zero. Um, and then for uh, current next, uh, current value, next value in, and we'll zip together the string and the string delayed by one. So, you know, that'll be the first, second, second, third, whatever. Uh, if current value equals next value, um, total plus equals the int of the current value. Um, and then again, they said, you know, this should uh, wrap around. So we should also, you know, if, let's say, len s is bigger than one. So, um, well, what does it, what does it say about having uh, a list of length one? Like a list of length one, it matches. So you know, let's let's just say that, uh, that that's fine too. Um, so if s zero equals s minus one. So we don't get this case, right? Because when we take, you know, um, all of them uh, zipped with the tail, we don't get to compare the first one to the last one. Uh, total plus equals uh, int of s zero, uh, return total. And, you know, we could write unit tests. I'm not going to. Um, I'm just going to assert that some matching digits of, and let's look at their examples, uh, 1122 two, uh, equals 3. Assert some matching digits of 1111 is 4. And we want to assert that some matching digits of 1234 is 0. And you know, if I remember anything from last year, they always like introduce a second version that makes me have to rewrite the first version, which uh, pissed me off and was why I stopped doing it. So um, hopefully that won't be the case this year, but almost certainly it will. Um, and this one should be nine. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll let them write our text cases for us. Uh, right, because I meant to do equals not function call. So let me fix that. Okay. Um, and you know, why don't I put a little doc string here? So when I look back at this, I'll have some idea why I did it. Um, and now let us missing function doc string. All right, I'll, I'll deal with uh, fixing up my pilot RC after this. But for now, um, and you know what, I'm going to make this shorter because it doesn't need to be that tall. Um, so let's see what happens if I do. Ooh. One, two, three, four equals four. Uh, why did I put that? Should be zero. So I wrote the test wrong. So that's uh, mildly reassuring actually. So let me and I've lost my terminal. Uh, let's try it again. Okay, all my assertions passed, so that's probably pretty good. Um, so now, I already had this. Um, okay, so, um, you know, first input equals print sum, let's see, if name equals main, just do it this way. Um, print some matching digits of first input. Let's make it a constant. First input. Okay. Doesn't look like line too long. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll fix that one too. 
uh, when I deal, deal with the pilot stuff. So now when I do uh, day zero one capture, it says 1069. So let's go back and plug that in and see if it's happy with it. Um, 1069. That's the right answer. I am one gold star closer to debugging the printer. Turn to day one. Okay, so now there's part two. You notice a progress bar that jumps to 50% completion. Apparently the door isn't yet satisfied, but it did not miss star's encouragement. The instructions change. Now instead of considering the next digit, it wants you to consider the digit halfway around the circular list. That is, your list contains 10 items, only included digit in your sum. Fortunately, your list has an even number of elements. Um, Okay, so uh, I think we're just going to write a new function for this now. Um, but it, it occurs to me that if you have a circular list, um, halfway around is going to be the same in both directions, right? So if I go five steps forward, five steps forward, and wrap around, um, then I just need to check. Um, so um, let me... Let me write another function now, and I'll copy this because uh, I think def some matching digits, I'll call this halfway, and it'll, it'll be a new function. Um, and so what I will do is I'll say, uh, you know, uh, length equals len s, halfway equals length divided by 2. Um, and so now what I'll do is I'll say uh, total length equals ln s for curve value. Instead of doing one forward, um, I'll do uh, halfway forward. And again, that's going to, um, it's going to miss one direction, right? So if the list is 10 things long, it'll get me from one to six, but it won't get me from six back to one. But but that's uh, that's very easy to do because now I just add it both ways. Um, and that should take care of everything, I think. So if we do some matching digits halfway, um, so again, I can do these, you know, assert some matching digits halfway 12, 12 equals 6. Um, and I don't need parentheses for this assert. Um, I can do assert sum matching digits halfway 1, 2, 2, 1 equals 0. And let me just copy these. That'll be easier. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5. 2, 3, 4, 2, 5 uh, should be 4. Um, and then if I have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, that should be 12 because every one of the matches. And then if I have uh, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, that should be 4 because the ones match and nothing else does. And, and now let's just comment this out for a minute and run it and make sure that, you know, uh, part two, that this passes our test. And it does. Okay. So now let's get our second input. And get your puzzle inputs. I should turn off notifications. Um, someone responded to a Facebook post where I said that I would like to be invited to someone's house for breakfast because they posted a picture of the really tasty breakfast. Um, but I didn't get invited. And uh, so there's our second input. So now, if name is main, we'll uh, you know print some matching digits halfway of the second input. I guess we could just do both actually. That's fine. Um, that way the program does both things. And now if I do day one capture. That says it's twelve sixty eight. So let us go to twelve sixty eight and submit. And that's the right answer. And we're one gold star closer to debugging the printer, and we have completed day one. Um, so, good. Uh, we were able to solve those without too much of a problem, but I suspect they will get harder in the future. So, um, I'm glad we were able to bang out an easy one and make that happen. Uh, thanks for watching.
Uh, and, you know, make sure to check out my Twitter, at Joel Gruss, and all that good stuff. Read my book, check my website. You, you know the drill. Look at my Twitter, you can find it all from there.